Evolutionary biology isn't the only branch of science that theists have a problem with. In fact, more theists are going to have a problem with neuroscience than with the Darwinian concepts involved in evolution. People want their minds to be beyond all measure. The idea that their minds are boringly finite is not attractive. And so, people want to believe that there's more and more and more and more in their mind than any science can ever tell them. And I've noticed that the war on neuroscience is already shaping up on YouTube. In the theistic war against neuroscience, they are using lies, distortions, pseudoscience, straw men, and obfuscation. The same kind of tactics they've used to fight against evolution. Let me show you a few of the lies and distortions about neuroscience that are beginning to work themselves into theistic arguments. A while back, Veritas48 posted a video called Why I Don't Believe in God, a response to Fat German Bastard. See the link in the sidebar. Here's a part of what Veritas said that contains a serious distortion of neuroscience. It makes no sense to say a brain state involved in worrying is about something, or that a particular neurological composition is about something. There's no aboutness with neurons, but there is with your mental states. And since there's something true of your mental states that are not true of your brain states, they cannot be the same thing, and that casts real doubt on you just being your brain or your brain and your body. Veritas was attempting to resurrect Cartesian dualism, the idea that the brain and the mind are two fundamentally different kind of things, material and immaterial. And in order to do that, he had to lie about neural nets. Once again, this is the lie. There's no, no aboutness, aboutness with, with neurons. neurons. No aboutness? No, that's dead wrong. Neural nets and brain states are about things. They are more about things than the book Moby Dick is about an obsessive sea captain hunting a white whale. In what possible way are mere neurons not about things like empathy and social learning? In what possible way is Broca's area not about processing language? In what possible way is the primary visual cortex not about processing visual images? What does Veritas mean when he uses the word aboutness? I suppose you might say that because you cannot read a neural net like you read a book and figure out what it's about, then in that context it's not about something to you, much like a Chinese version of Moby Dick would be meaningless to you. But if you did say that, you'd be dead wrong about what other people can do. In a certain way, some neuroscientists can actually read neural nets like you might read a book. Scientists are currently in the process of reverse engineering the brain and learning how knowledge is represented by neural net structures. At present, however, our reading abilities of neural net patterns are on par with a kind of run spot run, C spot run reading level when in order to understand the brain, we need to be able to read the equivalent of Marcel Proust's Remembrance of Things Past. Did Veritas want to say that neural net structures, either just organic ones or also artificial ones, had no information content? Is that what he meant by aboutness? That can be proven to be clearly wrong in the case of artificial neural nets because we can make neural nets that become about things and then analyze them to see how they represented their knowledge. We can make neural nets that recognize faces, do math, navigate unknown terrain, and more. In the sidebar are links to a couple tasks that artificial neural nets have been successfully used for. Medical and psychiatric diagnosis and speech recognition. Neural nets are now well-established analytical tools in all kinds of fields, and they now repeatedly outperform most other methods of pattern recognition. When I brought up the subject of neural nets in the comment section of Veritas's post, someone calling themselves Marcin P2 complained that unless you can reduce all of the functions of your mind, including self-awareness, to neural nets, it helps you in nothing. 
And that, of course, is just a bullshit God of the Gaps argument where the gaps for hiding God and souls is getting smaller every year. So I asked Marson, if one day an artificial brain could do all that a biological human brain could, say we made an android similar to Commander Data in Star Trek Next Generation, would he accept that as evidence against the soul? Would that not be evidence that there is no reason to inject some unknown non-physical soul into our speculations? His answer was to claim that I would still have no means to determine if the android had a soul because only the android himself would know. That's the kind of answer that proves how screwed up some people's thinking on the subject is. First off, he had virtually admitted that evidence was irrelevant to his view. Nothing would change his dualistic view of the soul because it was empty and vague and had no content. He also suggested the android himself would know. How would that be possible if people didn't really know if they had souls or not, but only thought they did? Marson said the android would know if he had direct experience of his memory and senses. If not, he is a machine and knows nothing. Having direct experiences of your memory and senses is not evidence, much less proof, that you have some non-physical soul, some ghost in the machine doing this subjectively sensed direct experiencing. I would suggest that human beings don't have as much direct experience as they suppose. Our experiences are often more indirect than direct. They get filtered through all sorts of neural interpretation before we become aware of them. Those of you familiar with the philosophical zombie argument can see where Marson is going with his claims. And if you know Dan Dennett's response to that argument, then you know my own response. If you don't know, well, there are links in the sidebar under the caption, Philosophical Zombies. I hope I don't have to go there. Marson also claimed that dualism had a clear definition, as did naturalism in its negation. I don't think that is true. If it were true, then those who would argue for the existence of some immaterial soul could explain exactly what it does. I mean, is it the soul that feels emotions? Does it do all our reasoning? Does it do some of our reasoning? Is the soul integral or essential to the consciousness and personality? Does the soul decide how we behave? What exactly does this ghost in the machine do for us besides get saved? If the soul were removed but we still lived, what would happen to us? How would we behave if we didn't have this hypothetical soul? Whatever you say we couldn't do without it would be the testable principle that would have to be incorporated into an android to disprove the soul. Whatever Morrison thinks the soul is, he doesn't believe you can necessarily see its influence in the behavior of an android. That is what makes his dualism empty. There is no possible disproof or proof of it. It has no testability. Now, there are, of course, people who claim to know all about what souls do. But all those who do claim to know do not agree with each other. The only thing I would be interested in is someone who has the balls to make a testable prediction and claim that making an android like Data from Star Trek is impossible. Impossible because it couldn't have a soul. In my next installment of this series, I will attempt to show how neuroscience has begun to reveal the mechanisms underlying consciousness, personality, love, morality, and even so-called spirituality. Brain scanning technologies have shown that all of these functions have physical correlates in the brain activity. Then I'll explain how brain damage, such as described in the books of Oliver Sacks, demonstrate that these brain processes are not just mere correlates, but are the physical basis of our personhood. If these aspects of our humanity are all features of neural mechanisms, why propose an unknowable, immaterial substance like a soul to account for them. The idea of a ghost in the machine is not just strained, it is now broken.